Okay, so in the previous part I didn't manage to fix this because this says that I have a simple key error. And I think the problem is that if I go back to the code now, you can see here that I change this to a string, but I don't do that down here. So it tries to find the key with the uh, six integer and not the six string. So if I just change this to a string, I think this should work. So if I now click remove from cart, it was removed. Nice. So then I know that this is working. But I don't want to do this two times, so I can just remove it from here. And then I go back to views.py where I use this and say str like that. So save, refresh, try it one more time, and yes, it still works. Great. So I want to do one more change. I think that if I go down here, you can see here that I set this to be an integer. But if I change this to be a string, then I know that when it comes here, it already is a string, so I don't have to convert it then either. So refresh, try it one more time, and it still works. Great. So then we know that the remove functionality is working. Great. So then I want to add some simple functionality for changing the quantity. I think that is the next part here. I can set this task to done because now we can remove products from the cart and then we want to make it possible to increment and decrement the products in the cart. So if I go to the cart view then we can add two more links here. A, href and then oops, url uh, change quantity. Uh, no, sorry, we can say um, yeah, change quantity, that is great. And then item.product.id, so we pass this into the URL. And then action equals increase. Increase plus and a href and just make a copy of this and instead of increase we say decrease decrease minus and save so if i now refresh i will get an error because this view doesn't exist yet so we can create that by going back to the views.py and say def change quantity request product id and then we want to get the parameter from the url which we called action i think if i go back here yes action equals request dot get dot get action and default this to be empty then we want to check that if this actually is a change or if it actually is in the url if action then we can say cart.add and now we just need to go in here and see that we are doing this we pass in the product id the quantity and if we want to update this so we want to say uh, product underscore id and what we want to do then is to say um, uh, quantity equals 1 because we want to uh, sorry just need to check the code here yes plus equals quantity so we default this to 1 but if action equals decrease then we can say quantity equals minus 1 then we can just pass this in here quantity and true because what we do here is to update the quantity. So we can see here now that I get an error here because we haven't defined the cart yet. We can do that first like that. And then when this is done, we can redirect the user back to the cart view. So just copy this and save. So hopefully this should work now. If I refresh, 
No, sorry, I forgot to add it to the URLs, of course. So path change dash quantity. And we expect a string here for the product ID. Views dot change quantity. And the name is also change underscore quantity. And save. So now the error should be gone. And if I click increase, this change to quantity 2. And I can go up and down. The problem is that if I go down to 0, then I want this to be automatically removed from the cart. So I can check here. If self.cart.quantity if this equals zero then we want to remove this so then we can just say self.remove to call this function and pass in the product underscore id save so if I then refresh try to decrease this then that product was automatically removed and if I go down to 3, 2, 1, 0 and removed nice so everything there is now working. So that means that I can set this text to done. Before I continue, I just want to say thanks to all of my patrons. If you too want to support me, you will find a link in the description below. Next task then for this part is to add thumbnails to the pro products. Because if I go into the models for this, in the store models.py, can see that we only have one field for the image and I want one more for thumbnails which we should automatically generate. So to do that we can say thumbnail equals models.image field upload to uploads slash product images and slash thumbnails so we can put it in a different folder. And then we can also set blank equals true and null equals true. So we don't want the user to fill out this. We want this to be automatically generated by this image. So to do that we need to create a new function where we first resize the image and then we want one, Im uh, one function for getting the image. So I have already done this a couple of times. I think maybe I did it in this project, product models.py. Yes, here we can see how we do this. First, we need to import a few things. So we take these three, scroll to the top and paste it there. So we import file from Django, we import bytes.io from the OS and image which was pillow which we installed in one of the previous parts. So then we can begin with the make thumbnail function. So we said just a def make thumbnail then we pass in the image and set the default size. Then we create a new image and open the image we pass in here. So now pillow is inside this variable. Then we want to convert this to RGB and that means that this will not work with PNG files. This is only work with uh, JPG, JPEG. And if you want to support uh, other types you need to, maybe this will work, but at least you need to change down here to PNG. And then we say img.thumbnail. So then this will generate a thumbnail based on this size or if you submit a different size to this function. Then we say thumb.io and initialize that function. And then we can save this by saying image.save, pass in this to a JPEG and set the quality to be 85 because we can decrease the quality on the image a little bit. And then we get the thumbnail by using this Django function, this information and the name of it. Then we can just say return thumbnail and save. So the next step then is to actually use this function. So to do that we have this function called get thumbnail, which I can paste in above here. And then 
we first check if self.thumbnail, we see if this field is already filled out or not. And if it is filled out, then we can just return the URL to that thumbnail by saying return self.thumbnail.url. But if it's not there, then we first need to check that if this project uh, product has an image, then we can create a new thumbnail based on that image. So to do that, we say self.thumbnail equals self.thumbnail. So then we use this function we just created and we pass in the image file. Self.save. So then we set this file so we don't have to generate this each time we try to use this image. Then we can say return self.thumbnail.url because then we are returning this URL to the, uh, to the front end where we are showing this. But if there are no image in the database, then we can just say return via.placeholder, which is a gray image we can use just for testing now. Great. So then we can go to the places we are showing the images. For example, in partials, products. Here we show the thumbnail. But instead of saying product.image.url, we can say product.get thumbnail. This will then call the function we created here. Do this check, return if we have a thumbnail already. If not, this will be automatically generated and returned. So now that that is done, we can just save, go back here, refresh. That will not do anything. But if I go here, Okay, sorry, I forgot we need to go to the command line and say python manage.py, oops, python manage.py, make migrations to update the database, python manage.py, migrate to actually do the migration. So then we can run the server again, refresh, and now this should be working if I use it here, media upload, thumbnail uploads, Okay, there's something wrong with that URL. But why isn't this showing the default image? Okay, I'll do a check here actually. But now I know that all of the products has images. So just save this, refresh, and then these images will be set to that uh, uh, placeholder image I added. Okay, but the URLs for these looked a little bit weird. Maybe I should actually remove this. And I can try to create a new product. Just quickly add uh, something. Dinner, dinner, the desk, 1000, then image. Then I select the car. I don't need to fill this out and the status can be active. So if I then go into this again, you can see that this should now be located in the correct place. And if I refresh, the product is there. If I refresh here, still in this weird folder structure. Okay, it's because it takes the name from this one. Okay. Mm. But that is just because down here where we take the image dot name, um, I can say name equals name dot replace. So now I can replace this just so it's gone. Uh, so then I replace uploads product images. Set this to be empty. Like that. And then down here we use that and say image.name. Okay, then we can try to do this again. Just refresh, clear this. And 
uh, save, go into the dinner again, then the thumbnail is gone. And if I refresh, the thumbnail is generated, fresh, and now it's located in uploads, project images, thumbnail, and that file. Nice. So now we have thumbnails as well. Great, so in the next part of the series I will work on the design for the cart page and the checkout page and also do some refactoring before I do the final part where we do some more checkout functionality and deploy the project. See you in the next part.